So I think we're slightly beyond full employment, um, but we're not yet back to our inflation target on a sustained basis. So again, we're trying to balance um, both of our goals with appropriate setting of monetary policy. So I think if we let things go on a little bit longer um, without any change in interest rates, that would probably not be the right path. So I'm, I'm, I sort of ascribe to the outlook as being consistent with this gradual pace of, of, of taking back some of the accommodation that we added during the Great Recession. Now one other uh, phrase that has really shut out to the markets here is you said that perhaps there would be a need to move the rate to a level that is higher than the long-term rate, and that long-term rate is around 3%. Are you implying that the Fed could hike beyond 3% in the near future? Well, not in the near future. If you look at the median path within, within the summary of economic projections, which the FOMC puts out four times a year, the latest one was in March. If you look at the path in 2020, the median path gets a little bit above 3%, and then we bring it back down. And that's a typical path that we've seen in past tightening cycles. So it's not totally unusual, but it's something that we need to be cognizant of, the fact that past interest rate paths may go beyond 3% and come back down. Now, 2020 is a long time away, and of course, whatever path we follow will be consistent with changes in the outlook. Um, it's hard to predict that far in the future. Now, of course, the Fed has said that the economy warrants a gradual tightening in the Fed funds rates. Uh, I just wonder how far the Fed is willing to go if it means yield curve inversion in the context of maximizing unemployment and, maximizing and, and keeping price stability in check. Well, of course, you know, the yield curve responds to changes in the economic outlook um, and also changes in monetary policy. So when we're thinking about a program monetary policy, we take an all in looking at all aspects of the economy. I don't think of the yield curve, um, shape of the yield curve per se is an exogenous factor. It's basically endogenous. It changes with what market participants view of the economic outlook is. So before you can say sort of like, why is the yield curve flat or why is it a certain shape, you have to kind of take a step back and say, is it because bondholders think that the economy, um, is the outlook is changing or not? So again, we're going to always be focused in terms of setting our monetary policy on our t dual mandate goals of maximum employment and price stability. Even if the yield curve inverts? Well, again, I don't think you can say like the yield curve would do that independently of what's happening with monetary policy. Now, uh, also in your speech, you've also said that the rise in oil prices and the value of dollar are worth watching. On the dollar, of course, the last couple of weeks, we've seen quite a big appreciation mm -hmm. of the currency, a tightening of financial conditions, so to speak. Would you say that a stronger dollar has become a risk to the outlook and the tightening cycle? I just think we, sh we need to be monitoring those things. I think at this point, no. Um, I don't see it, uh, those as huge risks to the outlook. But again, we need to be cognizant of what's happening in um, asset markets, um, including financial conditions in, in terms of what they're telling us about um, accommodation in, in the economy. And also in a broader uh, financial context, what we've seen is emerging market currencies have begun to get uh, quite disrupted from the strengthening of the US dollar. You've seen it in the Argentinian peso, you've seen it in the Turkish lira. How is the Fed thinking about outside emerging market currency depreciation in the context of global financial stability? Well, I don't speak for the Fed, but my own view is that we have to take into account um, the financial markets when we're setting monetary policy, but in terms of how we go about setting policy, we're always focused on the U.S. economy and our dual mandate goals. And so, yes, that we're in a global financial market. Um, different currencies, different assets will respond um, the way they do, but, and then that'll feed back into our outlook for the U.S. economy. But when we're setting policy, we're going to always be focused on our dual mandate goals. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.